one big thing. 32 years ago, St. John's and Georgetown both made the Final Four. Prior to their national semifinal game in Lexington, they met in the finals of the Big East Tournament in Madison Square Garden. They meet again in the same venue this week, but on a Wednesday in the first round of the Big East Tournament. Lots changed, though there are a few common threads. Chris Mullen, who starred for St. John's back in the day, is now their coach. John Thompson III, of course, is the son of the man who coached Georgetown then. That's become quite a topic of conversation lately, the father of the current coach and the massive shadow he still casts. Georgetown's about to finish its second consecutive losing season, and Saturday they got run by Villanova, losing by 26 at home on senior day. Fire Thompson chants were immediately drowned out by music played in the arena during a game where Nova fans were apparently noticeably louder. Asked afterwards if chatter about his job had been a distraction, a sports information director stepped in during a brief four-minute press conference and said, quote, leave it to game-related questions, close quote. A couple of disclaimers I feel obligated to make here. Yes, I'm a Maryland guy. No, I do not hate Georgetown. I happen to think quite a lot of JT3. He's a good man. But setting that aside for a moment here, how is this an acceptable level of performance if you're Georgetown? More pointedly, how can you allow yourself to be held hostage by your past to the degree that the son of the former coach isn't even allowed to answer what is a reasonable question given the state of the program? The only team Georgetown finished ahead of in the Big East was DePaul, who hasn't been over 500 in a decade. Jeff Goodman's column last week before the Villanova route gives a glimpse into the tricky relationship the Hoyas have to deal with. He spoke to four former Hoyas, none of whom would go on the record because as one said of Big John, quote, I'm still scared of him and I'm a grown man, close quote. And that fear is what frames much of the conversation about the 75-year-old legend who I also think is a good man. As everyone knows, he put them on the map, made the Bulldog logo iconic fashion. He empowered young men and inspires ferocious loyalty and, yes, fear from some of his guys even now. Quoting an unnamed player in Goodman's article, everyone knows a change needs to be made, but no one will dare stand up and say it. Imagine if Joe Gibbs' son coached the Redskins and after years of early success had some rough seasons but was seen as untouchable largely because of what his dad did. And the truth is, as big a deal as Hall of Fame coach Joe Gibbs was in D.C., Big John's presence at tiny Georgetown is more significant. His name is on buildings. By all accounts, that's what makes even discussion about changing coaches impossible, and that's what makes this fascinating. Well, Georgetown can obviously do or not do whatever they please, but there is no dynamic in big-time college basketball more complicated than the one Georgetown has. None. Gary Brewer's Washington Post column used an interesting word several times. Aloof. I'm not sure how long Georgetown can remain that way. Unless they go on a run in New York City this week, the Hoyas will finish under 500 for the second year in a row. The last time that happened, Georgetown fired its coach and hired the father of the one they have now. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to subscribe to ESPN's YouTube channel so you'll always stay up to date on all things SVP, which sounds awesome. You don't want to miss out.